One of the most anticipated cars of 2014 was the Lamborghini Huracan. For its local launch, RPM TV went on a very special road trip to Clarence. When Lamborghini launched the Gallardo in 2003, they started a decade that would rewrite their history and give car nerds a whole bunch of stats to recite, like it's the best-selling Lamborghini ever made. Over half the Lamborghinis on the road are Gallardos. And by the time they finished their production, they'd made over 30 versions and 14,022 cars. But now it's time for the next chapter. That chapter is titled Huracan, and it features similar elements to the Gallardo story. The newest Italian supercar is powered by a naturally aspirated V10. It has all-wheel drive and a seven-speed gearbox, and is named after a fighting bull. It's made with the most advanced materials, uses the best tech inside and out, and according to the press release, is as comfortable to drive on a trip to the racetrack as it is on the daily drive to work. From the inside out, this is a car with brilliant details that grab your attention, like a starter button with a weapons-grade firing switch cover and an aviation-style reverse gear selector. But it's also surprisingly comfortable, offering just about every modern convenience in a package that isn't nearly as bone-jarring or spine-destroying as you might expect, even over longer distances. Making the magnificent noise is a 5.2-litre V10 with 449 kilowatts and 560 newton meters. It is, as you'd expect, phenomenally quick, but it's the grip of the Huracan that's even more impressive. It corners magnificently and with such ease, you find yourself filled with the confidence of a world champion while blasting through a mountain pass. The Lamborghini Huracan is the successor to the Gallardo, but it's not just a moderate reinvention of the modern classic. Lamborghini didn't take the best bits of the old car and just put them into something new. True, they do have a lot in common, but the Huracan is a very different car. Prettier, more powerful, more technically advanced, much easier to use, and yet still a true Lamborghini and an incredible car to drive. A lot of credit goes to Lamborghini's V10 motor, but the all-wheel drive grip and incredible stability are just as impressive. There's a lot to be said for smaller, smarter cars in the 21st century context, which is why vehicles like the Volkswagen Polo, the Ford Fiesta, the Kia Rio, the Renault Clio, and of course the Peugeot 208 are selling in increasing numbers. Enter the Peugeot 2008, a car that uses the 208 hatchback's underpinnings, but combines them with a slightly larger and more versatile form factor. It also has a completely different personality. The 2008's character is less urban runabout and more weekend warrior, a car more likely to fulfill the role of family commuter than all-terrain pioneer, but that can cope with more challenging terrain if occasionally required. Most crossovers end up being slightly embellished boxes on wheels, or station wagons with attitude, but the 2008 is a handsome car. It manages to express its practical intentions with a flair not often achieved in a segment, dominated by pragmatic considerations. The cabin's execution is strong on feel-good factor, with a particular emphasis on comfort and design, without losing sight of practicality. It's spacious too, despite the 2008's compact footprint. There's ample legroom at the rear and the split rear bench seat allows a versatile range of loading and seating options. On the move, the compact crossover feels lively and responsive with good in-gear urge, but with a full load on board, the going gets a little less enthusiastic. The claimed 0-100 sprint time is 9.5 seconds with 196 km an hour top speed. The Peugeot's urge comes from a 1.6-litre four-cylinder engine linked to a five-speed manual gearbox and front-wheel drive. Rated at 88 kilowatt and 160 newton meters, the normally aspirated mill is willing enough but won't rip up any tar. I must say that the Peugeot 2008 has surprised me. Crossover vehicles very often lose focus in their quest for do-it-all versatility. And because the 208 hatchback is such a good car, I was concerned that the 2008 would lose some of that sparkle. But in fact, the 2008 retains everything that's good about the 208, but adds the extra space and the extra utility you'd expect of a crossover. It certainly makes for a very compelling argument, and you might even find that some people looking for a larger C-segment car might look at this vehicle as a very viable alternative. Compact and wieldy yet spacious and versatile, the Peugeot 2008 expresses everything that's appealing about compact crossover motoring.
There has quite literally been an explosion of premium compact sedans over the last little while, with Mercedes-Benz, Audi and BMW all launching similar products at a similar time. And it didn't take too long for that particular arms race to escalate to the point of who has the best performance versions, with each of those manufacturers offering models from their various performance divisions. The M235i may not have the official M division stamp of approval, but it still has a few exterior bits and some mechanical changes that allow it to comfortably wear an M badge. I wasn't a big fan of the 2 Series when it first launched, only because I thought the rear end design looked a bit like it was done in a hurry. But there are some very nice aspects to this 2 Series. For one, the dimensions are spot on. It's compact without being cute. The interior is the least interesting thing about this car. It's not small on spec, but it's not what you'd describe as big on personality. At best, it's straight out of the BMW rulebook on interior design. In fact, this car may have written that rulebook. It's all black plastic and orange illumination with silver bits to brighten things up a bit, but absolutely nothing telling you that this is a car with the kind of driving talent that puts just about everything else in its class to shame. The six-cylinder turbo puts out 240 kilowatts and 450 newton meters, and all that power is sent to the rear wheels through a six-speed manual gearbox. It's the kind of car that just encourages you every chance it gets. The combination of the engine, the gearbox, and the ride setup means that the M235i is a superbly enjoyable machine, even if your driving skills aren't exactly race-ready. Mercedes-Benz and Audi up the technical ante a little bit with their performance compact sedans, offering them with small high output motors and all wheel drive. BMW stuck to what they know. Make it rear wheel drive, give it six cylinders with a manual gearbox because that is a recipe for success. And the M235i is certainly a winner. The combination of a superb engine, assorted ride setup and great interactions means the M235i delivers satisfaction disproportionate to its compact size. Call me old fashioned, but for me, a sports car and an SUV simply can't be the same thing. Which is why when Porsche originally launched the large 4x4 Cayenne, I wasn't sure that that was a recipe that would work. As it turns out, it's been a huge sales success and it's opened completely new markets for the brand. This is the new Macan, a car that is a lot wieldier, a lot smaller, and as a result, also a lot sportier. We've come all the way to Cape Town to brave some pretty tough conditions to see just how well this vehicle fares and whether it is indeed a sports car. With active all-wheel drive, a strong turbo diesel engine and a suspension tuned for sporty reactions, the Macan Diesel S was certainly up to the challenge, and the cabin offered luxurious shelter from the elements while allowing ergonomically convincing access to its full house of features. The driving position is what one would expect of a sports car, a clear view of the large analog dials with the rev counter enjoying pride of place. The seats are supportive without being too racy, and the steering wheel offers multifunction controls for key systems. The Macan's shape, while unmistakably SUV, clearly reflects current Porsche design traits. The lights, the bonnet, the rake of the windscreen, as well as the LED taillight clusters and the blades along the flanks are all elements echoing other Porsche models. Does the newcomer feel like a Porsche? Yes, sir. Despite a curb mass in excess of 1.8 tons, it sprints, turns and drives like a sports car. Even the elevated seating position can't rob this athletic SUV of its dynamic thrills. We've spent the last 400 kilometers or so looking for blue skies, sunshine and the kind of scenery that the Cape area is best known for. And of course, we haven't really succeeded as far as that's concerned, but what we have proven is just how competent the new Macan actually is. Despite the rain-slicked roads, the Macan stuck to the chosen line and the suspension never lost its composure, even when pressing on. For once, this Porsche SUV lives up to its sports car heritage. With all that talk, the Macan Diesel S is a great all-rounder, while the agile chassis delivers the kind of handling normally reserved for sports cars. 
RPM TV's motoring year included many other highlights, like conquering a flooded Botswana in Land Rover's updated Discovery 4. We thrashed the hugely talented and entertaining McLaren 650S around the twists and turns of Midvale Raceway. The short wheelbase Mitsubishi Pajero was the ideal machine to tackle the sand dunes near Lambert's Bay. BMW's much-anticipated M4 Coupe lived up to our expectations with a thrilling track test at the Kyle Army Grand Prix circuit. The third generation Mini made its South African debut in Cape Town and we were impressed with its zest and polish. In Mozambique we got to grips with more off-road challenges than expected behind the wheel of the new BMW X5. We got to drive the red-hot Peugeot RCZR on Humpumalanga's best mountain passes and we tackled some tough stuff on the garden route in Jeep's eye-catching Cherokee Trailhawk. And that brings us to the end of our RPM TV Best of 2014. It also marks the final RPM TV episode for the year. After 39 shows and some 150 road tests, it's time to wish you a safe and relaxed festive season. Please travel safely wherever you go, don't drink and drive, and make sure you recharge those batteries for what's set to be a cracker 2015. RPM TV will be back on air January 15th. If you'd like to be informed about what's coming up on RPM TV next year, as well as the broadcast schedule, mail us at info at rpmtv.co.za. You can also follow us on Twitter and visit our Facebook page.